Um, Molly, thank you so much for coming on today. I'm so excited that you agreed to come on and this will be exciting. I first want to hear about how you made the jump from model to actress to um, author. Um, it's so funny. I was before this podcast, I was actually interviewing Kate Bach, who's currently on the cover of Sports Illustrated. And we were talking just about that jump and like what it means, like whether it be from modeling to acting to author. Um, but for me, it was definitely a jump. I knew that I didn't just want to model. I knew that I needed somehow my own crazy mind, like to have a voice. Um, so that kind of led me into acting. I started doing commercials. I got my first um, speaking part in a commercial was from Old Navy. And, um, and, it, and my only lines were, it was Matthew Ralston, who's an incredible photographer, cinematographer, director. And it was like, only? at Old Navy. Um, but whatever the only at Old Navy, only at Old Navy paired with Sports Illustrated and CoverGirl and um, I ended up getting on MTV. And so a really good friend of mine who's actually the head of ITV now, Adam Scher, who was with Ryan Seacrest, Seacrest for 15, 16 years, said, I really think like, don't just do House of Style with them. They really want to do um, cross production and cross promotion on, on, on the channels at Sports Illustrated. So, I mean, at uh, MTV. And so I did, I did Say What Karaoke. I did 50 something episodes of Mission Makeover. I did, of course I did House of Style, but he just, I remember him saying to me, you could be on five times a year or you could be on every single day um, after school with these kids. Um, and we were actually just talking about Kate and I were just talking about being a model, unless you have a platform to have a name, you're kind of just a model. And I think with Sports Illustrated and CoverGirl and certain things, Old Navy and MTV, that really gave me a platform to have a name. And so from that, I started taking acting classic, acting lessons. And then I decided that I was going to enter in this, into the Sanford Meisner acting course for a two-year course. Meanwhile, I lived in New York and Paris. I don't know um, what I was thinking, but I took like something like 70 something red eyes for over two years. I was about to graduate from the program. I got an agent because I was with Next um, all over the world. And she introduced me to Ari at Endeavor and Patrick and they sent me out on, I was like, I just want to do like, go out on an audition, you know, just see if I could maybe do this. Like I'm not giving up modeling. And so I went on a recur a recurring uh, audition to play Delinda Deline on Las Vegas on NBC. And um, I got hired, but right before the pilot, they were like, it's all or nothing. You can either be on for 20 something episodes if we get picked up or we're gonna make this part um, full time. And of course, they always tell you, don't worry, nothing ever goes. It's never gonna happen. Um, we were on for over five years. Um, and so that really cemented me not living in New York and Paris anymore, but only going a few times when I could get off of work. But, um, you know, I think with acting, it definitely gave me, because I was on a show and I wasn't jumping from Paris to London, to India, to Australia, to, to Morocco, to New York, to Kentucky. Like it gave me like a little bit of, um, it gave me like almost a home that I'd never really had. I remember being like, oh wait, I'm going to see these, I'm going to see these same people next week and the next week and the next week. Um, but I really, you know, I loved my showrunner who I'm still close with, Gary Scott Thompson. He's an incredible showrunner, writer, um, and Josh Demel and James LaShore. And we had just a really good group. It, it's odd for the past like two months now, they've been doing reruns on E! of, of Las Vegas. So I have a lot of people reaching out and saying, I love you, Delinda DeLine. Um, but... So that was good. And I think, you know, I did movies in between that. I really, at that point, I'm in my mid thirties. I really wanted to settle down. 
I had not found my prince yet. And so I decided to, I was playing pregnant on my last season of Las Vegas. And I decided that one morning I wanted to have a baby. And so I was just really, really worried that I'm like, oh my God, I'm such a gypsy. Like what's going to happen? Like, what if I never meet the one? And so I ended up going to freeze my eggs, going to ask the question. And I met with a doctor, Dr. Shaheen Gadir in Beverly Hills, fantastic doctor. Um, in, it was kind of funny because I'm like, listen, you know, I just, I, I really want to make sure I have this baby. And I've just read about people doing this. And at the time it was very new. And um, I, <laughs> I met with him. He was like, I really think you should freeze embryos. I'm like, okay, but I don't like, he's like, we can find you. He goes over to his computer. He's like, we can find you a husband. I mean, we can find you a donor. And, uh, and I was like, I, I don't think like, I, I think I'm okay. Like, I just want to make sure like later. And I'm like, <laughs> I, I was like, I, we didn't speak for like two years, like a year and a half, two years almost. So you didn't freeze your eggs. I did not freeze my eggs. Okay. I was just wanting to ask. I didn't think I needed to like go down, but I definitely wanted to freeze my eggs. He talked to me, not out of it, but at that time, embryos were definitely better. And I remember going back into his office when, um, right after I'd met Scott, we'd been dating a year and my girlfriends, we got into like a big argument. How could you ask him to do this? I'm like, well, I think I want, I'm like, I want to marry him. Like I want him like, anyway, just like I put myself out on the line. I ended up doing IVF freezing two rounds. Um, but it was interesting how that came full circle. Um, and you know, I don't know if, women and you know in your community who have issues with having a baby or all i will say about that is that i did ivf in january february and then i got um engaged in may and i was married september 24th i was just going back to a picture and it said produced by stuber films i got pregnant on my honeymoon um i don't know did i get pregnant on my honeymoon because i had an insurance policy like I had I don't know like I will say like you know your your podcast is all about being a badass and I think that was a true badass moment because I wanted to do this just for me you know what I mean like whether he was going to do it or I was going to do it I was freezing my eggs um we went on to freeze embryos of course but I think those bold decisions um you just have to take them like in your life and um and those kind of guttural feelings like we were just talking about like you know giving models giving models advice like if you had to give your younger self advice all over again like go with your gut like speak up have a voice like tell your agent tell anyone just make someone listen to you and I learned that along the way, um, but as you know, being in your forties now, my new motto of "Don't mistake my kindness or we for weakness," um, that has really led me to the book. I think, you know, we're we're in the midst of writing it now and and pitching it out, and it's just a really, um, and it's it, again, it's me and my mistakes, a love story, like. And sometimes I don't even want to call them a mistake and I'll get into more in that in the book because it's like the yellow brick path. So you could go this way and take the blue pill or you can take th this way and take the pink pill. It doesn't mean <laughs> those decisions are one is wrong and one is right. But I do think like having a business, being an, an entrepreneur, you know, you do you got to pick a lane. And when I was getting married and I was really struggling to, two of my boyfriends had dumped, like I was getting out of like a really bad codependent, horrible relationship. And I remember talking to my uncle, my mom's brother. And, and he just was like, listen, you have to pick a lane. And I, it was such good advice. And it sounds so simple because I was the type of girl um, who would be like, what's meant to be is meant to be. No, it's fucking not. 
No, it's not. Like, <laughs> it's so not. Um, I, it's not meant to be. It's what you tell yourself that makes you feel better in that moment. You take the steps and you line them up. And I did have to pick a path. And I did not have to get on a plane to go to New York and hang out. I did have to stay in one place and date and commit and not, um, you know, date a dead, wounded bird on the side of the road that I thought I could fix, um, which is always fun when you're dating. Those yes, things. yes. These are amazing. This is amazing advice. I love all the tips that you gave. But that, this book that you're coming out with now is your third book. It's Correct. my third book. I have a first book called Everyday Supermodel, and it's all about being your best self and like all the tips and tricks that I learned throughout the years of modeling. And then Everyday Chic kind of takes you into, um, you know, settling down, having children, organization. Um, and you know, it's funny, like you don't know where things are going to go. I was researching my second book called um, uh, Everyday Chic. And my editor, Harper Collins, Carrie was like, we need something on like organization as a mom. I always talked about nesting and how like I would go crazy. Like I'm very an organized person. Yeah. And the closer it got to every pregnancy, I'd like freak out. She's like, I really think you should talk about organization and how it keeps you um, accountable, how it keeps you organized. And more importantly, like how your house looks great. You know what I mean? Like, or your space. And, uh, at the time I was new into the world of, um, of websites and, and, um, at the time they called it blogging, but I reached out to two women, Clea and Joanna from the home edit in Nashville. And they, no one would call us back. And I'm like, so I finally said, Hey guys, I'm, I, I'm Molly Sims. Like, you know, I'd love to somehow, hire you, fly you out and I'll let you use the pictures. You know, you can say you work with me and I think your work is great. I found them. They're like, their aesthetic is incredible. Um, and they had like 25,000 Instagram followers. They did. And, wow. and by the time they'd come, we'd shot, they'd gotten a phone call in my pantry that Gwyneth would like to meet them with, with, I think she actually knew Clea, but would like to use them. And they just had started from there to blow up. And while they were there, they're in our pantry and they were slightly arguing, slightly like my husband and I were listening and they're like, I mean, you can't make that up. Like the, the depth that they would go into about a container and the space and just their <laughs> method and their methodology and like behind it. And I said to them, you cannot make that chemistry. And my husband was like, at the time he had a production company. And I was like, I really think they could, um, I said, I really think that they could, could have something on TV. They could have something. And so we ended up getting them an agent and we ended up selling a digital plat digital uh, master of the mess series to Reese Witherspoon at Hello Sunshine. And her deal ended with AT&T and we all just felt that there was still something there. And now they have over a million followers uh, combined on social, I can't even imagine, but we have a new show coming out in September and it's eight celebrities, eight civilians, and we're super excited. And again, you would have never thought me calling to interview someone about a book would lead to, you know, a reality series on Netflix, you know? That's I amazing. Think, yeah. I mean, I love them. I'm obsessed with them. Well, I love your house, everything that's organized and color coded. It's you know, I really impressive. Feel like they have this method of like 80, 20, and they always tell women like keep 80% full 20%. So you can actually move things, find things, what comes in, what goes out. Um, but I do think like people always ask me about like, how do you start something? How do you have a brand? And I always say, first, you got to have a passion and you got to be, you have to have a strong passion and you have to have a strong work ethic and you got to go for it. Um, and I know that sounds, oh, you know, what does that mean? But that is true. 50% of it. I mean, you look at Mimi and her success in beauty counter and 
you know, as an advisor and an investor to, you know, so many different companies that it's definitely, um, yeah, it's, uh, you got to have it. You got to have the passion. And also you have to have the interest because, you know, you're the one who's going to push it through. Um, I always say to, to women, I'm like, you know, use different verge, verbiage. Like I get to go to school. I have to take them to school. I get to make dinner. I have to make dinner. I also think like just really leading with positivity and trying to, you know, I do sound like my mother, but glass half full, it does help a lot, you know, and networking. I have to say like, it's ask networking. people to help you. Like I do like, and it's interesting. I had a little bit of a, a, a story, a story where I won't name names, but, um, always do favors and I'll always come through and talk about their products or them or what they have. And they're awesome. But I reached out recently for a favor and I was really blown off purposes, purposely, you know, it felt like, and I just was like, okay, I clock that. I got you girl. Like, as much as like you try to help people at one point, like, no, you can help me mm -hmm. or you can own it that you didn't do it. You know what I mean? So, and also even at that moment in my forties, I'm like, really hurt my feelings. You know what I mean? Like I have been yeah. over backwards. I mean, I'll be. You never say no. <laughs> you know, I, I do say no. I think that's the one thing. Huh? I'm trying to work on through my book is saying no and being held accountable and but you're so, there for everybody that's what I'm saying you're always you pack your days full you, you you're there for your friends you yeah but I also like that you know I love my tribe I love my children I love my husband like I really like this is the best time of my life you know um but yeah but I also have to have respect for myself and to say like it's okay that that makes you kind of yucky or feel sad or, or, you know what I mean? Like, mm -hmm. yeah, those are, those are still hard lessons. Even at No, they are hard lessons. Wait, so take me back to like, you did your books. Like what point did you embrace your brand? I mean, everyone kind of now knows you, like everyone follows you with Instagram and TikTok and the videos that you're making. And at what point did you say, okay, I'm going to dive in and really develop my brand through social media? You know, I think in the past year and a half, I really took the turn of like, you know, listen, social media as much as, you know, sometimes I, I hate it. I'm not, you guys don't want to know that, um, but it has definitely been able to, I have been able to not be in Atlanta or Vancouver or New York shooting on a movie set in a trailer by myself, having a social media presence, having a website building out my brand, writing these books, they've let, helped me become a mom. And, you know, I think in the last year and a half, I realized that I really do have a brand and I'm going to invest. And that's why we're relaunching mollysims.com uh, in September. And it's, um, it's gonna be with my voice, but at the same time, I'm, I'm gonna have amazing contributors. Um, I have Claire Bidwell, uh, who's a grief. Uh, she works with women with grief. She has written three books. Um, her uh, first book is in development um, um, to be a film with Lena Dunham. Um, I have K.O., who's one of my African-American amazing badass women talking about what it's like to be her in this time, in this movement, in this moment. She has an incredible beauty line. Um, we have beauty dermatologists, facialists. We have we kind of go the gamut, but it's all the experts and and people that I have come along my way that have helped me. That I have had the privilege of working in as a model, or in the entertainment world, or in the beauty world. And so it's really going to be a hub of all things beauty. Um, we were just writing our mission statement about like, you know, beauty inside and out. And yes, it's wellness and it's health, but it's all based from beauty. Um, but I think in the last like year and a half, I've definitely invested money 
Um, as you know, when you work on a website, there takes so many creative geniuses to make it come to life in your voice. And we found a great, um, a great guy out of North Carolina. He used to be at Harper's Bazaar for a hundred years and Sam Griffin, he's awesome. And I hired a few consultants to take this thing to the next level. Um, we're going to be doing a podcast um, kind of based on the book and, you know, all things kind of like what Mimi is saying, like, you know, what is it like? Like, how do you get to be a badass? You know what I mean? Like, what are the steps? And like, but more importantly, just doing a little bit of a deeper dive into my life and just the struggles of, you know, what I did and, you know, how I got through it or how I got through it and what I did, you know, we were really going to deep dive into those things of IVF and thyroid problems. And, you know, I think Mimi is one person because she has, you know, a hundred kids and a badass husband and, you know, 94 <laughs> brands. And she also has Lyme disease. And I think, you know, I had a thyroid problem that went undiagnosed. I gained over 80 pounds. And another piece of advice that I will give anyone who is listening, if you think something is wrong, it probably is. Um, it's funny. I want I told my doctor, I'm like, you have to write this book called, do you believe me? Or I believe you, or just because yeah. I think part of it is that, you know, just getting someone to be like, Oh, you're it's all in the head. <laughs> the baby. Yeah. I'm sure you're just binging. I, I know you're tired, but you have a newborn. You're just anxious because your baby was born with a tooth. No, I have a mild, <laughs> massive diagnosis. And so finally, when someone believed me, you know, my neck was out to here. I looked, I already look a little bit like a linebacker, okay. um, but at that point. Um, but again, like what it did to me mentally and how defeated and here I was, you know, September 24th, 2011, I'd gotten married. I was so happy um, to literally nine and a half months to the day, June 19th, 2012. And um, I asked my husband to take a picture on the scale, just because I could see, I couldn't see my belly at that point. And my mom had come to see me like a month before. And she was like, are you sure there's nothing wrong with you? Like it's an awful lot of swelling. Like I could hardly walk like my hands, like, oh, it's just swelling. You're and that was while you were pregnant. You're having a baby. So literally nine and a half to 10 months, I took the picture and I was 204 pounds. Oh my gosh. So I gained 80 something pounds in seven months and it went all baby. <laughs> but so it took about three, four months after to really diagnose it and to get someone to, to really believe that something was wrong. And it was interesting. I was on the phone with Dr. Baker, Susan Baker, if you're in the LA County or the LA district, or you like telemedicine, she is a rheumatoid, all badass, one of the best doctors. Um, that I have come across in terms of autoimmune and just look, she took on my mom's case and she just has to look at the whole body, cardiac, vascular, neuro, like everything. Um, and she, uh, we were talking about a friend of mine saying like, I'm like, I'm telling you something's wrong with her. I don't know what it is. I, I, I just know like there's no way. And, uh, she was like, I believe you. And it's just like, even now, like when someone will be like, or I'll try to help someone or like, I'll just keep on, I'll just keep on going. Um, but I do think you have to fight for your health. And, you know, I recently lost my mom and, um, you know, I look at the journey, you know, with our healthcare system and just be your best advocate because it's true. It's really true. You know? Right. So you were talking about how you love to be organized um, and you have a lot going on and you always have a lot of parties and people and kids and entertaining and you're so gracious with hosting. How do you keep and working and, and schools and your, your hands-on mom, how do you keep it all organized? Like, are you a paper person, digital person? I'm a paper person. You know, I'm like my son. I'm like, I have to literally write it down like five times. I'm like studying for an audition right now. 
And I literally, I'm like, I'm still, I'm like, I'm writing my lines. Um, I definitely have to write things down like over and over and over. But once I write things down, I'm pretty good. I have a lot of papers everywhere, which you probably, guys probably don't know that. Um, I work hard and I play hard. So if you're a working mom, especially now you're probably in COVID or you're working, you know, in an apartment with your friends, like I think it's very, the best advice I could give is that um, do back to backs because then you're focused and you're timely. Um, that really helps. Like when you're dedicated, you're going to work and when you're not. Like I know that I worked out at seven o'clock this morning. I got everybody fed, three kids off to their little camps, which is not much. It's 10 kids, but they at least get to have human activity um, during COVID in New York. But I will, I just did a Sports Illustrated podcast. I'm now on with Mimi. Like, and then I will stop, go pick them up. Like, I think designated times is really, really important. Um, and also planning, like, I just went to the grocery store yesterday and like, I'm like, okay, we have three brownie mixes. Like, what can we do? Like, and then last night, you know, we made cupcakes. Like I have a great, I have a great support group. Like my girlfriend and her family's here. Like I have um, a, a nanny who helps me, you know, I, I know that's very controversial, controversial, um, but she's my family and I love her and she helps me be able to sit here and talk to you and and she's an incredible person and i think we just tag team really well and but i do think organized um and also like maybe you know i i think last year was a big turning point um just because like my mom was getting sick and my dad was getting sick mm -hmm. and you know, I had to start to say no, you know, and like, I feel bad or, but it's good. I got really good at being like, okay, I'm going to go for five minutes. Like I would go, I would take my picture. I would do whatever I needed to do. And then I, I was out like my head, I think it was like the critics choice awards. Like I literally was in two hours of hair and makeup and a gown. I went with him. I'm like, I can't sit here for another four hours. I walked down the red carpet with him. He was my prince. We got our pictures. It was so fun. I got to see him. I wished him on my way and I got back in the scar in the in the car, came home, got in the shower, took all my makeup off, and we had dinner, the kids and I. So I think, you know, listen, for everyone, it's it's how you, you know, how you do it. Um, I know my first, you know, child Brooksy, like the calendar does swing to the first one. But now Scarlett's calendar is, you know, they're, they want to, they want to do things and they want, so we really try to like, okay, what do you want to do? I'm a big believer as Mimi um, and I kind of bonded as parents um, and then later as um, entrepreneurs, uh, we really actually bonded over um, sports and education. And, you know, I have to say, like, I really as a parent, um, I really, you know, I worked very hard at school. School did not come easy to me. My parents drove two hours to Nashville, Tennessee to help me do a Kaplan course for the ACT. I had a terrible public education. Um, but what they did to get me to have that um, and the importance that they, um, they put on sports and being part of a team um, it has really translated truly in my life, whether it be working within a company, working with people, being like, okay, great. I think this, but I respect what you have to say too. I think the best advice is always surround yourself with smarter people than you. And you don't, you know, don't have an ego and don't, uh, just hire good people and listen to them. And, listen, I had a situation the other day where they were like pitching me this thing and everyone, everyone gave a really strong pitch. And I was like, no, I don't really, like, I really want it to feel more niche. I really want it to be inclusive. I really want to hone it down. And, you know, I went against everyone on my team, but normally I'm like, okay, I like that. You're, you know, you've got that. So I think 
you know, really like for me as a mom, education and sports, keep your kids busy, um, right. keep them, you know, in a sport because then they can't be bored. Then, and I listen, I love my kids to be bored. Sometimes I'm like, go be bored, go do nothing. Um, but I do think having a sport and having to get up for games the next day will help me. And I've seen it through Mimi has such a badass children. Um, how it really, you don't see it now, but you see it in junior and you see it in high school. Mm -hmm. You definitely do. It keeps them out of trouble. It keeps them focused. Keeps so they have to be at a lacrosse game at 8 a.m. on Sunday morning, two hours away. They're not partying Saturday night. You know, and I also, right. again, like I said, just being part of a team and like, you don't want to play that position. Well, that kind of sucks. You're going to have to, you know what I mean? And you got to make the most of it. You know what I mean? Like, the life lesson, right? It's a life lesson. My husband, he played baseball and he will always talk about, you know, that essence of being on a team, you know, what's good for you might not be good for the team and how you take that. And, you know, I'm teaching Brooksy like, it's okay to lose. <laughs> but because we all do yes exactly right. no it's true that's great advice advice yeah. where do you find your um i could ask you questions all day long um because there's so many things i could talk about the social media and whatever but where do you find you have so many good tips and products i assume people are just sending you stuff but you have to go through them where are you finding your tips and your you products know, from my relationships from the modeling world and the entertainment world. And I've really kept up and I'm also like a connector and like my natural, like, I love being like, you got to use this person, do this person for this. This is great. I love this product. Um, I, I get things sent to me. We DM companies, companies say, Hey, you know, could I send you this? And I literally, well, I am one to, really try the products before I talk about them. Um, I had a situation, which I will show you, um, that I definitely try all of my products. Um, oh my God, where is this? I, I can't even find it, but I, oh my God. I, I had tried this lip plumper, so, whatever, but I could try products. So this woman's awesome. I'm not going to say her name, but like, she's incredible products, which I'll talk about later. But I literally like my face started. Oh no. Like blowing up. Blowing like turning up. Red. I'm like, can you see that? Oh my I, God. Yes. Oh. oh my God. Um, Did you send her that picture? No, I, I called my team. I was like, listen, I think I'm allergic to this product, but I don't know. We do. We try everything. Um, we research a lot, like in, t in terms of, you know, having a site, uh, we're working with incredible writers and, you know, ultimately connectors. And I think that's where really my first two books came from, whether it be an organizer or a tip on how to do that. I also, that's what I naturally love. So I'll be in there trying products like my girlfriend downstairs she's trying two products at the moment. I'm like, do we think that works? We like the consistency. What do you think? You know what I mean? Like I clearly need my roots done, but that's just, I don't know. That's just me. I think, you know, I think my game has changed with social media a little bit in terms of, I feel like I'm connecting to my audience more and my community and really building that. And I'm thankful for that. Um, you what know, do you think you changed that, that did? Like, what was the transition? I think the transition, I used to get the advice from a lot of different people. Well, just, you just be a regular mom. And I, I kind of was like, well, I, I am a regular mom. I change diapers. I pick out boogers. I, I, own, <laughs> I own a minivan. I own two minivans actually. Um, but I, I am in an interest, I'm in an industry that I do get to go to the Vanity Fair Awards. I do get to go to the Cannes Film Festival. I do get to travel to incredible places to film or to work. And so, you know, I can't deny, you know, my work. And so I think, especially with social media now, like I think letting them in on like the fun side of me and like yeah. the happiness and the crazy. And I think they get to see a little bit like, 
the undone of Molly. And I think that has been really refreshing to me and I think refreshing to my community. Um, and I really enjoy it. I, you know, I've always enjoyed connecting. Um, my only thing I don't love is that, you know, Instagram or that perfect picture that you display of your family, you do realize it's the 50th picture that you've taken. That's the best version. Your Instagram is the best version of yourself. Right. And so, you know, I'm not one, I'm not one to retouch much or, um, only until I had some skin problems over the last five years did I really like smooth that all that melasma off your face. But, um, I think that has really changed with my connection to, uh, my community. And I think whether you're a brand, whether you're a blogger, whether you're a writer, whether you're a person with a voice, I think being authentic is number one and really letting them in on not just the good and the polish, but also you want to pull your hair out. And, you know, um, and I think, you know, I don't really think I'm that funny every now and then, but apparently you are. Well, think I'm funny, so I started showing that more of that, you know. Right, right. No, they're, they're great, that. especially during quarantine, during COVID, right? All your I, funny videos. Yeah, they're fun. I like a little TikTok every now and then. We're about to film one today. It's going to be very funny. So fun. So um, what, any last minute tips or advice that you would give to either someone who wants to start out in your industry or somebody who wants to pitch to you? Because I know you're an angel investor as well. Idea, any other last minute pitches for anybody who wants to be an entrepreneur? If I tell you the story about what just happened to me, you would be blown away. I had a, a young actress um, move to New York, move from New York to LA, and she um, she was like, she started helping babysit um, on the weekends with me, and she was Emma's babysitter in New York. And she was a musical theater, she's a musical theater actress. She's 22, 23, she's lovely. But she was like, listen, I was sitting there. No one was in the house. It was a lunch. I think everyone was asleep or whatever. And she's like, can I talk to you for 30 minutes, 10 minutes, five minutes, one minute? And I go, what is this about? She's like, I just want to show you something. I'm like, oh God, no, no. And then she's like, really? I was like, Sh and I was like, well, well what, what is it? Because, you know, constantly people try to like, anyway, so she sh tells me what she did in school and she shows me this like 30 minute short that she'd done in her final. And I was like, huh. I was like, hmm. I'm going to think about that. Talk to, talk to my husband. About it. I couldn't get it out of my head. I couldn't get the songs out of my head. And I'm not a musical person. I am so like, I am terrible at singing. And uh, anyway, I was like, let me see that again. And so cut to, I was like, well, who's the composer? Who's the writer? So I dug deeper and I dug into it. So it was about six months ago, seven months ago. So I can't get into the details, of course, but we got a green light to write a script um, to it to be based into a movie. Really? Oh my gosh. How psyched is she? Yeah. So it, it ended up, you know, not being what she actually showed me, not even close, but, you know, of course she's going to be involved and, in, you know, and hopefully have an incredible opportunity, but it just goes to, and she was literally red when she was trying to show me. I'm like, but she persevered and she was like, you know, and again, the reason why that I ended up looking at it was because the girl was so passionate. She just was like, you just, you gotta see it's Like she was just so, you know, and yes, like, you know, DM me, pitch me. Like I, you know, um, my agents and everything are listed on my website and, and all of that, but 
I, I think the best advice that I would give people, um, be hungry, mm-hmm. you know, like, Gotta get some grit and go for it. My girlfriend says, I'm a hustler, bum, 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 bum. but I am, I'm a hustler, you know? And I think, you know, um, you gotta ask, right? You can't wait. You gotta ask and don't, don't, don't to not ask because you're afraid. If you're asked and it comes out wrong, like even I remember like being on the pitch, I'm like, oh God, I don't want to say anything. I don't want to say anything. I don't want to say anything. It's a big, it's a big network. I don't want to say anything. And like, of course, the person was like, Molly, I know you have a few words to say on that. I'm like, you know what I mean? But like, I got going. Like the one thing when I was on Vegas, Jimmy Khan, he's a really good actor. He told me, he gave me a really good piece of advice besides being still, be still and don't use your hands as much. But the other piece of advice he gave me was that nerves are good. Nerves mean you care. And when you care, it's not a bad thing. Like when you stop caring, you stop being nervous. He always told Josh and I that. And I thought, you know, it's okay to be nervous. You know, it's okay to like, to want it, you know, like I did a pitch the other day and I knew, like I knew these six faces across on that zoom didn't, they, they were not interested. I don't know why in the world they would take the meeting. Um, but I got off the phone. I called Major. Go listen. Whether we sell this or not, we're not selling it to them. You know. So just remember, someone's energy, good or bad. I don't know if they would have bought it or not. I, you can feel it. You know yes. what I mean? Like you can feel like you have, you know, you have passion or you you feel that energy. So just remember, like even if you're on a Zoom, you have to bring it. You know, like. And that is half of it, you know, besides the idea. But I will say like, um, it's not easy. It's not, not, not easy. But what's the old saying? Um, Luck plus determination. No, uh, determination plus perseverance equals luck. And I I believe that. I truly like... I was certainly not the prettiest. I was certainly not the skinniest. I I was tall, but I did not make my career or my, you know, my, I call myself like a cat. It's like I have like nine lives, but <laughs> I did not make my career or my careers um, without hustling. Right. You have to make your own luck, right? You make your own luck perseverance plus determination equals luck. Like people are like, oh, oh, she, we were just talking about that with Kate Bach, the Sports Illustrated model. She was like, people always say like, well, you're so pretty, of course. Like, you look so good. You don't have any problems. Like, no, I make my own luck. You know what I mean? That, right. And, and yeah. Because otherwise every, every model would have the same thing that you're doing, right? Every model and every actress would have a brand and they don't. And listen, God brand. given genetics, I have like, I think that's what we're also going to go a little bit deeper into the book and the podcast about like, you might not think that I'll never wear a sleeveless gown that's cut like that because I have body dysmorphia in terms of like, you would never know that. You know what I mean? You'd think, oh, well, like, what is she talking about? You know, anxiety of like getting in a dress and that, um, but, you know, getting in a dress and, you know, that angst of still like, you know, if you ask any stylist that I work with, even Rachel to this day, so, you know, I can always have like angst about my fittings from just my years of modeling and like, what if I'm not going to fit into it? What? So those really, those deeper topics of like really, you know, really speaking truthful about like the anxiety around like weight and body dysmorphia and, you know, having to say no and disappointing people and, you know, the medical issues, like being like, I, you know, became my mom and dad's parents, you know, a few years ago when that sandwich generation and what's that like having really small kids. I'm an older mom um, and to have such young kids and, you know, what just, what's that that's like. And I think whenever you can, you know, really have those 
authentic conversations with your community, I do think that that helps you build your brand. That helps you connect. Mm -hmm. Um, mm -hmm. And I love working with different companies. Like I love, I just invested in a cookie, a cookie dough company. Well, they're not a cookie dough company, but I, I, I singularly support them in, on the West side in LA, but there's a gluten-free, um, so many kids now have allergies, nut allergies, weed allergies, soy allergies, you name it. So many children have real issues. And so I started using this cookie dough by Capello's and they have a gluten. Oh, I love Capello's. I, I know. Yeah, I, just, I, I eat them all the time because of you. Yeah. Well, I think I gained, I gained weight just from eating gluten-free cookies because you think they're gluten-free. So you're like, oh, I can have like the whole pack. <laughs> um, but I ended up investing in the company last week and they have pizza crust. They have every, everything gluten-free, but I love them. Um, but, mm -hmm. uh, but yeah, finding, you know, different, different things you want to back and, and, you know, that's also a big thing. Like people need money, you know, people need time. People need expert advice. Like you can be an investor or an advisor and you don't have to give a drop. Like you may have a specialty. So always ask, guess what? The answer can always be no. And if it's no, you can ask again, but I really, I'm a really strong believer and these earrings are really big, but I'm a really strong believer in going for it. Mm -hmm. I love it. I love it. This has been my mom. She would always say, go big or go home, go big or go home. It's true. You can end on that. That's amazing. This you've given such great advice and I really appreciate it. And anybody who's not following Molly, you need to follow her on Instagram or she has her website and it will be relaunched. You have one there now, but you were relaunching it in September with yeah, lots of good news. In September, we have a new workout series. Um, I did a, um, uh, a whole month. Um, it's really hard. I'm not going to lie. We shot it right before COVID. I was in the best shape of my life and now you have to start all over again, but it's a really good plan that um, I think will be out in September with a meal plan for a month. And it's a pretty big challenge, but I think you guys will Ooh. love it. We've got the site um, and more to come. And I have a great Facebook group that I've created a beauty scoop. So if you go on my website, you can sign up for the newsletter and it'll, it'll, um, it'll get you to this group. But yeah, I just, I really, I really do love connecting and I feel like through sort of like where you are now, like you can interview badass women or badass men or badass companies because, you know, you've had the privilege of meeting these CEOs and CFOs and influencers. And so, you know, having that in and that access to really good people, I do think, um, that has been my passion to like hook people up with really good people or really good things or really good experts because there's nothing worse than a shitty doctor or <laughs> a shitty friend or a shitty educator like there's nothing worse like so you know especially I guess if you pay top dollar for them it drives me nuts when you pay top dollar for like a top interior de decorator and then the couch comes in wrong and you're like, wait, why did I just pay all this money for? And so just really honing in on, and like Mimi, you know, these badass experts that have really made a difference in my life. Like, I won't put someone on my side or I won't unless I really believe, like, you know, really believe in the product or the brand or the person. I think it's really important to be honest. And I think, I think that's ultimately why I've been successful. Um, because I won't just that like I won't say that doctor's good without them being great, right? You deserve. Right. You deserve. Well, my new favorite dermatologist now is your dermatologist because <laughs> of your video. I love her. She's amazing. She's, She's amazing. Incredible. My whole everyone, my whole family goes now. Holly Bakshanda, I highly recommend you wherever you She's are amazing. in the world to get a dermatologist, do mold checks. It's really melanoma. Well, you know what's, what I like about her is like, she'll do the mold check. And then she also does the other skin stuff. I feel like you never found a doctor that did both. Like they would not want to touch you for the mold stuff to do your sunscreen. Yeah, you know, check. Your mold, and then you're like, wait, do you want Botox? I'm like, yes, a lot, please. <laughs> do 
right in here and right in here. And you can also- <laughs> She does everything. Go back to my scalp. That's okay. <laughs> All right. Well, thank you, Mimi. You're awesome. You're awesome. And thank you so much. I appreciate it. I'm so jealous you're going in in a second. Uh. <laughs>